All right, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to separate your DJ mix into separate tracks so when you burn it to a CD, it's just not one big, long, 60, 70, 80 minute track. Now, this doesn't specifically relate to Scratch Live. However, as I mentioned, I do get asked this question a lot. And it does somewhat pertain to Scratch Live because if you have the SL3 or the TTM57, you can record your mix with it, uh, but it's just one big, long file. So a lot of people ask me, how do I separate it into separate tracks so when I burn it to a CD, it's just not one big, long file. Well, to do this, you're going to need to use an external wave editing application. The program I'm going to be using is Audacity. It is a freeware wave editing program for both Macs and PCs. Uh, so just do a Google search for Audacity, and it's going to be the first search result listing. Now, there's two versions of Audacity out right now, the stable 1.2 version. There's also a new 1.3 beta version out. Uh, in this version, I'm going to be using the 1.2 version. However, it's pretty much the same process in the beta version. It's just slightly different, but if you want to follow my instructions uh, exactly, use the 1.2 version. Uh, so download Audacity, install it, and whatnot. Uh, then you're going to need to open your mix file with Audacity. So here's my mix right here. It's about 56, 57 minutes long. So what we're going to need to do in Audacity is uh, basically we're going to be setting labels or track markers throughout the mix at the points where we want the tracks to split up at. Now to set a track marker, uh, first thing you need to do is make sure you have the selection tool highlighted. Uh, that's this icon right here. It looks like a capital I. And then to actually set a track marker, uh, you're going to go to the point where you want to select it and you go to project and put uh, add label at selection. Now the keyboard shortcut for this is command plus B if you're on a Mac. I would assume the PC equivalent is control plus B. So we need to set track markers or labels uh, throughout the mix. Now the first thing you need to do is set a label or track marker at the very beginning of the mix. So at 00.00.0, .00 .0, uh, you're going to want to set a track marker or label. All right, so hit the command uh, shortcut key, command plus B, and that will uh, make a new row under here, and it's going to be titled label track. And you'll see this little red box right here. And if you click that, you can enter a name for it. So I'm just going to name this track one. And basically, that's all there is to it. So now you just need to go through your mix listening to it and deciding where you want to put the track markers or labels at. Uh, you're going to want to zoom in. Uh, you don't want to be in fully zoomed out mode. You want to put track markers uh, very specifically and diligently uh, at specific points. You don't want to just drop them at any random point. You don't want it like in the middle of a kick or a snare or at a, a bad transition point in the mix. You want to have it. Uh, you know, kind of logically placed uh, with to match the transitions of your actual mix. So uh, this is a good spot right here, I think. So I'm going to add another track marker right here. And I'm going to label this one track 2. If I can spell right. Track 2, okay. And zoom back out and go ahead and uh, just go through your mix. I'm repeating this process now at the points where you want to set the track markers at. I'm actually going to go through... Uh, specifically placing all the track markers, but I think you get the general idea. So well, let's place one right here. Label this one track three. Well, let's put one right here. Track four. And finally, let's put one right here. And label this one uh, track five. Okay, so now we have all our track markers set. Yes, I know. Uh, you're probably going to have a lot more than five track markers in your mix. Again, I'm just, uh, just doing this as a general example. You're probably going to have a lot more track markers. Uh, but now that we have them all set, now we need to export all these to separate files. Now to do that, you're going to want to click on File, and you're going to click on Export Multiple. All right, now the export format, uh, you're going to want to use WAVE. Do not use MP3, and I'll tell you why. There's two reasons. One is you want to use WAVE because it is a lossless and uncompressed format. Since you're burning this to a CD, you want to keep the highest quality possible. Second reason is MP3 is not frame accurate. So if you export all these to MP3, when you go to burn the mix in your burning program, uh, most burning programs have some type of option. It's usually called like a uh, uh, two-second gap between songs or something of that nature. Now, even if you don't have that option checked, you're still going to get little skips in uh, between the tracks on the CD, and it's just not going to sound seamless. So uh, you need to use Wave for exporting. Now... Uh, so, so select wave and then the export location that doesn't matter just choose the folder where you want to export all the uh, songs to 
Now, split files based on labels. That's what we're going to want. Now, file names. Um, if you labeled all the track markers already down here, track 1, track 2, track 3, you can use this one right here. Uh, use label track name. If you didn't label these markers, you can use the numbering consecutively option and just type a prefix that you want every file to be named. I would just you know keep it the same track or mix or something like that. And this will consecutively number the file so it'll be track 1, track 2, track 3, track 4, track 5, etc, etc. Uh, but since I labeled all my uh, markers, I'm going to use that one. And that's basically it. So now we're just going to click on export. And there you go. It's going to start exporting all the files now to separate tracks. And we'll just let this finish up. Alright, so here we go. We have exported all the files now. So now it's just a matter of importing these files into your preferred burning program. Um, I'm going to be using iTunes. So here we are in iTunes. Let's make a new playlist now. Let's just title it Mix. And let's go to the folder where the files are. It'll be in Music and then Mix. So here are my files right here. As you can see, they're labeled uh, Track 1, Track 2, Track 3, etc. So you can just highlight them all and drag them in here. Okay, and they'll be nice in order. Make sure you put them in order too. That's why I recommend you use this track naming convention. So you can just see it's labeled Track 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So uh, that's just nice and easy. They'll be already in order. And then you just go and burn this bad boy to a CD. Okay, preferred burning speed. That you know, will depend on your burner. I'd recommend probably slow just for, you know, just for sake. case some people have old CD players that can't read uh, fast burn. So I usually keep it at 8. Uh, audio CD. Gap between songs. Make sure you select this to none. If you don't, you're going to have little gaps between songs. And it's not going to sound seamless. As I mentioned, make sure you use WAVE. If you use MP3, even if you have this option checked to none, you're still going to get little gaps and skips between the songs because MP3 are not frame accurate. So, again, make sure you're using WAVE. And that's basically it. So now you just click on Burn. I actually don't have the CD in it. I'm not going to burn it, but uh, there you go. That is how you separate your mix with Audacity and do separate tracks. So when you burn it to a CD, it's uh, all separate tracks and not just one big, long 70- or 80-minute file.